Greetings. Obviously, Francesca, we're having a little bit of difficulties with her in Doha, so I am now going to try to patch Francesca in. If she can just request for Francesca to get in here, and then uh, we'll try to get started from the other end. So, Francesca. Francesca, you're in Doha. If you can just there. Oh, there she comes. Hopefully she can hear me as well. Honestly, Francesca, your, your voice is still a little spotty now. Try again. Speak now. Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah, that works better. Very good. Okay, that's great. So for everyone who is following us, uh, you know, we technology help us, but sometimes technology can be also very difficult. So this is one of the cases. <laughs> I was saying, Jeff, uh, that um, we felt the need, uh, of course, uh, to organize this uh, special edition of the Insider News because we know that many people uh, are wondering and questioning about what is going to be for the World Championship and they are wondering about the news. So here we are tonight, Francesca Ragno and Jeffrey Winterstein to bring you every single detail that maybe you, you might not know at, at this moment. Jeff, you can still hear me? Are you sure? Yes, no, everything is good. And I'm excited. I'm, you're obviously in Doha. You've been there for a little bit now. You've been uh, one of the first people to actually see all the events and excitement that's going on. So I'm actually waiting with a lot of the audience to figure out uh, what's going to go on with this World Championship. So please, Francesca, let us know a little bit. So I have to say I'm I'm very pleased uh, to be here. I'm very honored to be here. Um, I went to the showground and I have to say the organizing committee are doing a spectacular, spectacular event. They are putting so much effort and I have no doubt that actually this World Raven Horse uh, Championship would have, would have been um, absolutely would have pushed the, the bar even higher after Katara, but now that you are close, now that we don't have much time and the countdown, countdown has started, I can really see this with my eyes and I'm very happy. For everyone who is following us, I want to let you know that we had the honor and I had the honor and the pleasure to be able to interview Prof His Excellency Professor uh, Khalid bin Himraim Al Sulaiti, which is the general manager of Qatar and also the World Arabian Horse Championship hosting committee chairman. So after this live, we are going to share his interview because, of course, he has some very important news to share with you, with all of us. But Jeff, I want to talk with you about some point so let's go deep into this live let's start talking about the effect of the location jeff we all know that this is the first time in history that the world arabian horse championship is organized and is moving to doha instead of being in paris so depending on the location of course there are a lot more difficulties and different actions that brings within it. What do you think about the location, Jeff? Well, just talking about the dynamics of the location, um, from a technical aspect, and as you're a trainer of a horse, I mean, for the, for the, there are Middle Eastern and European horses that were based in Europe for the summer show season. Now, all of a sudden, they need to move to the Middle East after Aachen or maybe if there's a few European horses after the European Championships. So they've got everything that entails with moving to, to that location. They've got to deal with the quarantine. They've got to deal with being able to still effectively train their horses. Uh, the horses that were there for the Middle East, waiting for the Middle Eastern show season to start, they have a distinct advantage because they've already been there. They've already been in that routine. Um, the temperature difference is quite different from what it is in Europe right now. Um, the end of Aachen, it was still warm if they ship then, if they're shipping later, um, they've already got ice in Belgium, they've got snow in Poland, I mean, it, it's a, so there's that technical challenge of trying to keep the coats right, kind of do everything, and then when you're on the ground in Doha, you've, you've got to go through the quarantine, but then you also need to keep your horse in training, and you don't have the facilities that you're used to 
in your normal training center. Um, <clears throat> I will say though, this is the flip side. This is for the Middle Eastern horses. When it was in Paris, they had to deal with the same sort of issues with the horses that were in the US that wanted to compete in Paris. And so, you know, it's all fair. It's just the challenges of, of a change of location for, for world championships. I think that's um, probably from the from the technical aspect, I think that's probably one of the more interesting things. Um, <clears throat> I will say for, there's a lot of European based trainers here that, that compete at the world championships. And so how much of a catch lead situation is it going to be for the world championships, arguably the most important show in the world where it's a little bit different when they were, you know, most of those training centers are in Belgium. There's, you know, Germany, Frank in Germany, there's um, some Italians, obviously the poles, but um, they're relatively close. Now it's going to be a little bit more like a catch lead situation because, um, you know, unless they're going to be with the horses there, they're flying in and they're picking up the, picking up the lead that, that bring a horse into the most um, important show of the calendar. And so that, I think that's going to be exciting to see and very curious to see as well. Your thoughts. I think it's going to be very interesting because for sure the Middle East countries are going to take their chance to compete at the World Championship um, for the first time in Doha instead of being in Paris. As we have difficulties in traveling here uh, for the Europeans, it was the same for the Middle East countries when the World Championship is in Paris because of course there is also very expensive, it's cold. We are facing kind of the same difficulties but in two different countries. So I'm sure that all the Middle East countries are taking their chance to come here to Doha and participate because it's easier, because it's closer. And probably so we are also going to see kind of a different kind of forces for the first time in the World Championship. And um, so I'm very, I'm very curious to, to, to see all of these. What I also think is that when the, this decision was announced last year, um, I remember that moment very well. And of course, even though many people were very happy, uh, some people had some concern. They maybe were worried because every changement brings some worries and some mystery with it. But uh, I have to say that now that we are very close to the event, uh, talking with people around, uh, I feel uh, that everyone found their way. Horses still uh, actually participated in all the European shows, uh, Aken, Menton, also the smaller show around Europe. And now they are just traveling to Middle East a little bit earlier. Instead of coming in January, they are coming in December for the World Championship. So um, actually everything is working out very well. Also the handlers, they, they seem to me very happy and uh, not, not, not so much stressed or anyway, not uh, such a big, uh, a big difference. So um, I, I find this very, very interesting. And uh, for sure, what, uh, what makes me very excited is that uh, we have to say the Qatar Organizing Committee, Organizing Qatar, really pushed the bar very high uh, and the level of our industry very high with the Qatar show. And so we are all looking forward and to, to, to see what they, they, they set up here. And uh, I don't really know what to expect, you know, uh, they, they are always full of surprises. So um, I think it's going to be very interesting. And it's also cool to provide new challenges to, to the whole industry, to, to, to change a few things and see how, how, how people adapt and how it goes. So let's talk now about the attendance of the World Championship, Jeff. Um, this is also a point that many people is uh, wondering about. Uh, I uh, know from the organizer that until now that of course the entries are closed we can count more than 150 horses entered in the show which is a huge number for the paris world championship especially because we don't have a very important point is that we don't have price money so what's your thoughts about this well to put that in perspective i, I saw that this morning francesco when you posted that interview i watched it just like everybody else and you talked about the entries and i i honestly i was i was a little bit surprised because put this in perspective in the last two years there was 91 and 102 horses that were entered we did some quick math um for the for these paris world championships in that um keep in mind that Poland is roughly 20% of those entries those last two years, you know, give or take 17% and 21%. And I've talked to the, I've talked to some of the polls, the state studs are not attending. That doesn't mean that there won't be, there's, there's some private breeders. Obviously there's some excellent private bred horses that could potentially make the trip. I don't know. I haven't seen the entries, but 
now we're at 150 and we're losing those 20 percent so i think it's pretty exciting um about that to just to kind of see where this attendance is coming from um i have a couple of thoughts one is that i i think we often heard especially from a little bit of the smaller breeders when it was in paris you know they're like yeah i had a really good horse but to be honest it was it's tough to go to paris to, com to compete um and, and it's understandable i think there were some challenges i mean we're talking about paris at the end of november and you know beginning of december it's cold it's it's rainy um and it, it's a challenge to come from someplace warm to be able to compete like this so is these horses made up by some of those smaller breeders that had really good horses maybe we're going to see breeders that we we hadn't seen before um my thought also thinks about um kuwait and saudi in that uh, Kuwait is mostly for straights, but they've had an explosion of breeding the last few years. Saudi has an explosion of breeding, not in straights, but in just, you know, purebreds. It, are, are we gonna be seeing more, more of those horses? And so I, I'm really looking forward to kind of, kind of seeing how all of, all of this uh, shakes out. And, and uh, talking about the, instead the attendance of people, um i uh, interviewing of course the organizer with more than 100 tables uh, the show organizer are completely sold out there is not anymore one single t vip table table available and we are not even at the day of the show but we are more than one week away so this is fantastic i think that people from all over the world will come the sold out of the tables is a beautiful of course, news because the World, the World Arabian Horse Championship uh, during the history, of course, is one of the best shows of the world where all the most beautiful horses compete. Uh, but is indeed also one of the best occasions for people to meet because it's the World Arabian Horse Championship. So people from all over the world, it's a fantastic experience. And I think I have the feeling that actually even more people this year will be here in Doha attending the show just to see what is going to be about uh, and to enjoy not to lose uh, this uh, wonderful experience so let's see and uh, regarding the horses i totally agree with you jeff i think um, maybe we will see different horses from different countries and actually we don't know what is going to be about about the future of the world championship if uh, you know we know that for three years it's going to be doha paris doha but uh, we don't know what is going to happen later and what if the world championship will actually keep moving around you know and maybe be organized like in many other sports in many other world cup being organized every year in a different in a different country this could also be interesting because we we'll give the opportunity to every to every single country to actually compete to the world championship don't you think so yes i think i think it brings up the broader point i'm not surprised I'm not surprised about the attendance for people. Um, I'm a little, I said I was a little surprised with horses. I'm not surprised with people. I mean, I think it's been demonstrated the high quality event. I think there was nobody had any expect, expectation that it was gonna be anything other than a complete high class event at the highest level. So that, so that I'm not surprised. With regards to other, other locations, obviously it's, it's Qatar here and then it goes back to Paris. I, the hope is, we're going to have to see how this plays out. I think there's, it's, a, it's a new era. It's a learning experience for all of us. Everything is, the whole dynamic has changed quite a bit. Um, obviously, I think all of us would like to see it um, move to um, other locations. If it is it truly going to be a moving around, around the world, I mean, my, my first thought is um, being on this side of the pond is the Americas. I mean, whether US or Brazil or countries that breed very good horses, if they have a world championship and what that would look like. Um, I think that would be um, really, really interesting. And so um, I think a lot's gonna depend on how all of this plays out. And so I think there's a lot of anticipation for the future and, and how all this is gonna work. This is just a bunch of thoughts of what Point, and they are taking it uh, in the best way possible as uh, this is their standard that they already demonstrate with Katara. But now, Jeff, uh, we shared a little bit of thoughts. Uh, we talked about uh, location and statistics uh, and future, but let's go a little bit deeper into the news and into the information about the World Arabian Championship 
2023. So I want to talk with you about the venue because you have to say that uh, as we shared already in many other videos, uh, the show is going to be organized at the old Doha port, which is a very historical um, place of Doha that has been renewed actually uh, just lately and uh, we can say that this venue is really like a connecting dot between the the, the future and the past and uh, keeps within itself a lot of history of the state of qatar the venue and the showground you have to know that the arena are you are you are you are you, are you ready is is going to be 10 meters bigger than the arena of qatar so this uh, it's amazing and brings within a lot of uh, I think uh, challenges. What do you think about it? I think I heard that also this morning for the first time. You didn't share it with us with with me privately. I heard it when everybody else did. Uh, and my first thought was, I'm a big movement guy. I think movement is really important in the Arabian horse. And that was my first thought: is does it is it advantageous to horses that are big movers? Moreover. It gives more arena. Suppose a horse is a really good mover, but it, he sometimes gets overamped and he gets too hot and he's not showing his best movement. It gives you more space to be able to bring that out. Um, and on the flip side, if the horse isn't a good mover, how is that going to affect, you know, you're going to be exposed for that for longer because you've got more arena that you've got to get all the way back and out the gate with uh, trying to, you know, trying to show your horse is not the best mover. So I, I'm excited to see how that aspect plays out. Um, I think it's going to affect more in the qualification when they're giving out points than in the championship. But it's 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 um, a really interesting dynamic. And for one, I'm I applaud them for doing it. I am sure, and I've heard from other. You know, we had a little pre-conference before this this uh, live. It is not just uh, about movement, enhancing the movement. It was about the aesthetics. The organizer wanted to make sure that the arena was could accommodate everything, and it was about that. But I, you know, I'm interested how it affects with that. And I think let's let's be honest too. In the championship, the more room it means when those horses in there, there's going to be more space for the trainers to be able to spread out, and that's just to everybody's advantage and for them to be able to show the horse to their best advantage. Um, so I. I, for one, I'm excited about that. I think it's the right call. I think we should always go bigger rather than smaller. Um, but of course, I'm going to make <laughs> Trainers will have to go to the gym, I tell you that, and prepare themselves to run a lot and make these horse fly. <laughs> Uh, so, regarding the venue, I also wanted to let you all know that for the first time in history, um, in, th there will be, of course, many activities around the show arena as it is the style of Katara, but we have something very, very nice for the kids because behind the big, huge arena that we used to compete, we will have a small arena, like a miniature arena with really the, the sand and some real Arabian horses and some teacher and also, teachers and also a um, pony riding uh, area for so that the kids that come and attend the show, they can actually, yes, ride the pony, but also learn about the Arabian horses. They can try to, sh to show them. And uh, this is an, an example of how actually the Katara committee are really trying to uh, share the the Arabian horses worldwide with the kids and teach as, mar as much as possible about this breed. Again, about the venue, Jeff, I want to tell you and uh, all our followers that are following us that the pattern completely changed. So you should not expect the usual color, the, 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 the usual uh, look of the World Championship. Of course, the logo is there, but as it came to a new city, the pattern, the colors changed massively. Um, the style is fantastic. So I want to let you know to keep following us because in the next days we are going to release more and more videos. And actually, you can follow the colors, which are um, based on the white and the green and the blue so that you can adapt yourself and your clothes to to this fantastic pattern that that we have um, we have here jeff i think something remarkable that we have to talk about are also the sponsors because for the first uh, time in history the world arabian horse championship has outside sponsors that support the event just uh, later, uh, early on today, we had the first press conference for the World Arabian Horse Championship in which we announced Orido as a main sponsor. So what do you think about this point? I think it is about time. I think um, that's for our industry to grow, for us to 
have these type of shows. I think it needs to move out just the, the, the participants sponsoring it themselves, but we need those internet, those outside sponsors. We need um, those other industries to be able to recognize the Arabian horse industry is valuable and able to um, bring eyes and is worth their marketing dollars. And so I, I really applaud that. And I'm, I'm excited that that's finally coming to fruition. Very good. And um, I think that's basically almost all the news that I wrote on my little note here, Jeff. Of course, there is so much more to say, so much more uh, about the World Arabian Horse Championship. But we also want to leave a little bit of suspense because we want you all to follow us. We want you all especially to come here to Doha and take part of this changing um, experience take part of this new chapter of the, in, of, in the history of uh, the Arabian horse world. So Jeff, when are you gonna come? Well, <laughs> I'll, I'll come when um, I'll be in there in a few days when I get my ticket. So <laughs> I'm excited about I'm excited about this, and uh, I think um, I think just to frame it, I mean, I don't think anybody has any doubt it's going to be a top flight show. I think everyone is a lot of curiosity. I'm. I think it's pretty savvy of the organizers. They've been not releasing a lot of information. I think everyone's going to be surprised when they arrive there. I think they give just a little bit of tidbits. And so I, I'm excited to be boots on the ground and uh, check out the venue and start digging through the catalog and fig figuring out who's there and, and doing the work that, that we do. And it's a new location. I applaud the organizers for doing that. I mean, we all love the Qatar location, the Qatar International location, but I applaud them for doing something new. And and can we tease this? I, I heard that it, it's not going to be uh, the theme. Is What is the theme that's going to be for this World Championships? You kind of mentioned something. Are we allowed to say that? Absolutely. Yeah, we are allowed to say that. Of course, this is not the Qatar show. Qatar Committee is organizing the World Arabian Horse Championship. So this show is, of course, allocated in Doha, but it has a more international theme, a, a more international look. So Qatar, it's really Qatari-based that keeps the tradition and the history of Qatar. Instead, this, um, this show is more international. It's for everyone and because, of course, it's the World Championship. Also, there is an update about the dates. The show was meant to start on the 6th, but they just released the new dates of the show, which is 7, 8 and 9. We will roll the championship. Um, the show will start every day around 3 p.m. And so just in the afternoon and the championship, we can expect, I think, it to end around 6, 7 in the afternoon. So it's not going to last too long, but uh, we will have some amazing and very full hours ahead. Yeah, I'm very excited. Francesca. Um, thank you for your report for Doha. Thank you for everything you're doing there on the ground there and uh, bringing this, this information. And um, I apologize to our viewers. We had a few technical snafus from uh, getting this all started, but um, you kind of, you hung with us and uh, I can't wait to get this party started. So uh, see everybody in Doha. And uh, please be sure, I want to thank, uh, uh, first of all, the organizer to let us uh, doing this coverage and uh, to share with us the news so that uh, as a media, as a Rebbe Insider, we can bring this all with you guys. But be, please be sure to follow and to watch now the uh, interview of Professor Khalid, the general manager of Qatar, that we will be released just right now when the interview ends. So I'm Francesca Ragno. And I'm Jeffrey Winterstein. Rebbe Insider. We see you in Doha soon. Ciao. See everybody.